Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Jay Austin and Lauren Gogan? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first I'll look at the background in this case, then I'll move to my analysis. Jay Austin graduated from high school and earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Delaware. In 2009, he moved to Washington, D.C. and attended Georgetown University, eventually earning a master's degree in government. He started working at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. He came to believe that most personal belongings were unnecessary. He ended up building a 140-square-foot house he referred to as the Matchbox. It was profiled on a few TV shows. Due to his Spartan lifestyle, he was able to save money. He took unpaid leave from his job and traveled around the world. He drove across the United States on a scooter. He rode across Europe in a train and traveled to several other countries like India and Morocco. In 2012, Jay Austin would meet Lauren Gogan, and the two became friends. Lauren had graduated from Georgetown University in 2010 and took a job in the admissions office. Lauren was also adventurous, but not quite as much as Jay. Even still, she liked Jay's personality, and she started to adopt some of his values. Eventually, Jay and Lauren became romantically involved. They spent a lot of time together riding bicycles. They went on a few adventures, like when they cycled around the perimeter of Iceland. In 2016, Jay and Lauren decided to ride bicycles all around the world. They are going to start at the southern tip of Africa, ride north into Europe, head east into Central and Southeast Asia, then fly to South America and cycle all the way back to the United States. They planned their trip carefully, weighing every single item they would be taking with them, even items like their toothbrushes and underwear, to make sure that the weight they were carrying wouldn't put them under too much strain. They only had $23 a day to spend during the trip, so they were going to be dependent on the kindness of strangers. The expected duration of two to three years was longer than what was permitted through extended leave. Therefore, they both quit their jobs in 2017. Jay wrote in his blog, quote, I've grown tired of spending the best hours of my day in front of a glowing rectangle. I've missed too many sunsets while my back was churned. Too many thunderstorms went unwatched. Too many gentle breezes unnoticed. There's a magic out there. It is a great, big, beautiful world, unquote. People who knew the couple found their decision to take this trip to be questionable, and there were some concerns about safety, but the couple was determined. They started their bicycling adventure in South Africa. On July 23, 2017, they were plagued by a flat tire as they were leaving Cape Town. They set up their tent right on the side of the road. A security guard spotted them and arranged for a truck to drive them across the city to a campsite. There would be many other examples of kindness on their journey. In Botswana, they were suffering in 95 degree heat. A man stopped his car to offer them ice water. In Morocco at Christmas time, a family offered them a room and a house for three days. The couple referred to it as a Christmas miracle. They were caught in a snowstorm in Spain and again had a flat tire. A man in a white van stopped, drove them to his house, and put their clothes in his dryer. He drove them to the bus station and even loaned them 100 euros. Their trip was not without its challenges. Lauren developed an ear infection in France and had to go to the emergency room. She also contracted pink eye. At various times, the couple had upset stomachs and sore throats. In Spain, an angry motorist hit Jay with his car. The couple was involved in a bicycle crash in Zambia. Elephants charged them in Botswana. Someone stole lights off their bicycles on a 31-hour ferry ride on a lake in Africa. Despite these problems, the couple was left with an overall positive impression about the nature of people. Here's what Jay wrote about his philosophy on kindness in his blog on April 5, 2018, 273 days into the trip. Quote, you read the papers and you're led to believe that the world is a big, scary place. People, the narrative goes, are not to be trusted. People are bad. People are evil. I don't buy it. 
Evil is a make-believe concept we've invented to deal with the complexities of fellow humans holding values and beliefs and perspectives different than our own. No greater revelation has come from our journey than this. Unquote. In July 2018, the couple was writing in Tajikistan in Central Asia. There were concerns that this might not be the safest move, considering this country is close to Afghanistan. But Lauren told her mother it was safer than New York City. The couple was cycling in a mountainous and windy environment. Elevations were as high as 15,000 feet. Lauren was struggling to catch her breath and having panic attacks. She was thinking about ending the adventure and heading home. Her idea was to fly back to the United States, earn some more money, and then rejoin Jay at another point in his trip. So Lauren was going to stop, but Jay was going to continue. Lauren decided to tough it out and stay with Jay. At some point, Jay and Lauren started riding with a Dutch couple and a Swiss couple who were in their late 50s and early 60s. The six people were all riding together. They became friends. On July 29, 2018, the group stopped at a gas station to fill up on water. A local man driving a Daewoo sedan started annoying them. Using perfect English, he asked them a number of questions. He seemed to be very interested in where they were from. Jay told the man that he was from the United States. As the group started cycling again, the sedan plowed into them from behind. Several men jumped out of the sedan and started hacking the cyclists with knives. Four of the six were killed. Jay and Lauren were among the dead. It is believed that the assailants were ISIS extremists. They had been looking for weeks to find Western travelers to murder. Now moving to my analysis. Jay and Lauren were enthusiastic people with strong feelings on a number of issues. Both of them were concerned with topics like equality and justice. Both were intelligent and compassionate. They tended to see the best in people. Jay was described as a minimalist who was always up for an adventure. Lauren was described as somebody who was not overly materialistic, but she liked nice things. It appears as though Jay was going to ride around the world on a bicycle with or without Lauren. She did not want to lose him. This put pressure on Lauren to join him on the trip. Friends of Jay were actually happy that Lauren was going because she was considered much less impulsive and much more pragmatic than Jay. Jay did appear to be aware of some of the risks, noting that in general, this type of trip was safe, but it only took one encounter with a dangerous entity to end his life. On January 10, 2017, he wrote this in his blog, quote, I worry about something happening and not being able to stop it from happening or not being able to do anything once it does happen. And that's not just a worry. It's a terrifying fear that outweighs all the preceding doubts and dread put together, unquote. After the couple was murdered, the reactions from the public could be divided into two categories. Category one, this was a naive couple who denied the existence of evil. They traveled on bicycles through dangerous areas, somehow believing they were immune from being harmed. This is what happens when impulsivity is too high and common sense is too low. Category two, this couple was adventurous and idealistic. They wanted to do something different, make their own way, find a purpose in life. They took a chance, but it was worth it. They took reasonable precautions, and the expected result was survival. Unfortunately, they just didn't have good luck. Which reaction from the public better reflects reality? What happened on this trip? Here are my thoughts. This is just my opinion. I think that Jay was impulsive. He talked about how he recognized the risk, but he still took chances, as if simply recognizing there was a risk would somehow mitigate that risk. Lauren became caught up in Jay's enthusiasm. She was not as physically fit as Jay and nowhere near as risk-taking, but she wanted to be with him. They were romantic partners. During their adventure, they seemed to have a number of close calls. There is the sense that they were overly dependent on people helping them. On a trip this long, if there were one or two occasions where they were in danger or in desperate need, that would be one thing. But they had many stories about how they ended up in terrible predicaments and nice people saved them. It seems like the trip was arranged so that they would be in danger, like they were trying to artificially create these dire circumstances, 
live on the edge. They had a lot of time to plan the trip. They claimed they planned it carefully, yet it seemed like the trip was a series of people rescuing them. That doesn't seem to be consistent with proper planning. I think this was part of the excitement. People sometimes feel more alive when they are in danger. What I find so interesting about this story is the circumstances of the couple's death really did not seem to be necessarily tied to their risk-taking behavior. Yes, they were in a country that can be dangerous, but this was still an unusual type of attack for that area. It really did seem like random misfortune. If they died in that snowstorm in Spain, or when the elephants charged them in Botswana, that would seem to be more connected to their recklessness. Being attacked by extremists who specifically wanted to kill Western travelers was really more about the misguided and murderous intent of those killers, as opposed to the couple taking an unacceptable risk. It was not as foreseeable as other dangers they had experienced. If the couple's risk-taking behavior contributed directly to their deaths, then I think the first reaction about how naive they were is justified. But considering the nature of the attack, I think the second reaction makes more sense. They were living their adventure and ran into some bad luck. I think the narrative about being naive shifts the blame from the killers over to the couple. I do, however, think it's fair to be somewhat critical of Jay's suggestion that evil is really just made up. I can understand why people find not only his words, but his timing to be ironic. There are definitely people in the world who choose evil, like the people who murdered Jay, Lauren, and their two friends. This case serves as a reminder that one should not underestimate evil in the world, but also not to permit the presence of that evil to drive pessimism to such levels that adventure and enjoyment are destroyed. Those are my thoughts on the case of Jay Austin and Lauren Gogan. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.